Hey Chiefs Kingdom, want to be on the show? Easiest way is to use hashtag Chiefs and ask me your questions down in the comment section. We got mailbags coming up every single weekend. We're doing two on the weekends now, so use hashtag Chiefs and ask away. You don't even have to ask me questions about the Kansas City Chiefs. Ask whatever you want, but you got to use that hashtag and put your comments down below. So go ahead, ask away. On today's show, I got eight players you should keep an eye on during training camp. Before we get to my players to watch at Chiefs training camp, let's hit the news from this morning. Rookie offensive lineman Lucas Niang has decided to opt out of the 2020 NFL season. And this is an interesting one because he becomes the first notable rookie to do this and maybe the first rookie to do this overall. I don't know if you, any UDFAs have opted out, but for sure no top 100 picks have opted out and Lucas Niang becomes that first guy to do that, at least as we're filming this, obviously with today being the deadline of opting out, anybody could do it at any second. But he joins Damian Williams and Laurent Duvernay-Tardif as the third Kansas City Chief to opt out of this upcoming season. And it's it's fairly significant, right? Maybe Niang was going to compete for a starting job at left or right guard. Maybe he wasn't. Uh, but it does leave you a little thin on the interior. Now, Niang long-term, like we've talked about, is more of a tackle prospect. Played strictly right tackle. You're going to be fine at the tackle position this year. But uh, does Martinez Rankin slide inside after he gets removed from the pup list? I think now it's pretty clear, I think, that Andrew Wiley and Coleccio Simley enter training camp as your starters on the interior on your offensive line. So this is a fascinating one. Lucas Niang has decided to opt out of the 2020 NFL season. Obviously, he'll get his $150,000 stipend, and his contract will carry over to next year. So it'll almost be like he's really just a rookie next season. That's when his four-year rookie contract will start. So before I get to my players to watch at training camp, what is your one-word reaction to Lucas Niang opting out of the 2020 NFL season? Let me know. I'll say stunning. But again, I'm not upset. This is a personal decision. Every player can decide to do whatever they would like, and they can choose what's right because it is their health, it's their lives. Let me know what your one-word reaction to Lucas Nang opting out is in the comments section. So let's start with the rookie running back, Clyde edwards Lair out of LSU. This one should feel obvious, right? This might be the number one guy most of us are watching this year. What can the new Chiefs starting running back bring to the table? Uh, I'm excited. The expectations are high. Obviously, they're even higher now with Damian Williams opting out. We've talked about Clyde a lot recently here on our shows. Uh, Andy Reid's high on him. He likes him because he thinks he's a better version of Watt Brian Westbrook, which means he should be really good in the screen game, should be good in the rushing attack as well. I'm excited to see what this kid brings to the table and what he provides to this Chiefs offense, as are members of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, he's never going to be a 1,400-yard rushing guy in this offense. I don't think. If he is, you can go ahead and give him Rookie of the Year. Uh, but I do think he can give you yeah, six to 900 rushing yards, potentially, depending on you know how many carries he gets. And then I think he will be the lead back, especially in the receiving game as well. I mean, did anybody have a more quiet college football season than quiet Clyde Edwards-Hilaire? Everybody talks about Joe Burrow and the receivers at LSU. He was pretty fantastic as well, and I think he will have a major role on this Chiefs football team, which is why they took him in the first round of the NFL draft. Over under 1,200 yards for Clyde Edward Delaire. Type O for under, type U for under. Let me know. O for over, U for under. Producer Dylan giving me that weird look because I can't talk. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Flood the comments. Let's get a bunch going down there. You guys can debate. O for over, U for under. Next up is McCole Hardman, the second-year receiver out of Georgia. He's a popular breakout candidate uh, from many in the media, including me, because I just think he's that talented of a player. We saw his explosiveness and limited reps last year as a rookie. I think he's in line for a bigger role this season. And I've posed this question before. I wonder if he could unseat Sammy Watkins as the number two receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs as soon as this year. Now, in the future, it's almost a given because Watkins is probably gone after this season but look at what he did as a rookie on only 26 catches 538 yards and six touchdowns 
That's explosive, guys. I don't think he's going to average 21 yards a catch this year, but he'll for sure be a 15-plus guy. Again, we saw his value in the jet sweep game. They can use him on special teams. This guy is a game-breaker, just like Tyreek Hill. Now, I'm not saying he's Tyreek level in terms of, you know, all the stuff uh, that Tyreek is good as just a receiver as well. People think it's just speed with the cheetah. No, he's a really good route runner as well. Hardman's got to get a little more smooth in that area, but I think – very, very quickly, he's going to be wide receiver too, perhaps even as soon as this year. So who will have more yards this season? Type SW for Sammy Watkins, MH for McCole Hardman. Let's debate. It'll be the pinned comment on today's video, so you guys will be able to find it easily. Reply with either SW for Sammy Watkins or MH for McCole Hardman. But now with Williams out of the mix, I think he's got a good shot to beat run your number two running back here. Uh, he's good in the pass game. He's pretty good in the run game as well. He's got the experience, and he's got the experience in the AFC West, spending his first four years with the Oakland Raiders, obviously now the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I think he can be your running back too. Now, I like what I saw in limited uh, reps last year. The yards per carry needs to be up, but he's playing at a better offense now. Had the three touchdowns. Obviously, his rookie year was more of an impact player on the ground for the Raiders, but the receiving game is, I think, where he'll have a big impact on this offense. You saw last year had 36 grabs for almost 300 yards. I think the yards per catch would go up in this offense. I think they could get creative with DeAndre Washington. He could be a 6 to 10 touch per game type of guy, depending on the training camp he has and what kind of niche he plays, and obviously how dynamic Clyde edwards helaire ends up uh, being for this offense. Do they want to play him 85 90% of snaps as a rookie? I highly doubt it. So guys like DeAndre Washington, Darrell Williams, Darwin Thompson, who's going to be that RB2? I think it's going to be Washington, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Who will be RB2? Type 1 for DeAndre Washington, type 2 for Darrell Williams, type 3 for Darwin Thompson, and then type 4 for Elijah McGuire. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Now, Damian Williams opted out. He has decided to stay safe, safer than most other NFL players have, obviously. Uh, not going to rip D-Will for that because that is his decision. We got a bunch of new face coverings available. We've been pushing these for a while, but these are brand new ones at chatsports.com slash Chiefs Mask. You can get this one that will cover the neck as well. It's hot outside. If you're doing yard work, you're not going to get that sunburn with this one. So take advantage of that. You got new three packs available as well, including this USA themed Chiefs ones. This is my personal favorite. I think it's a good look. Chatsports.com slash Chiefs masks. You still got this four pack available. You still got the player ones available. Once you go to that link, the Mahomes two pack is there as well and all the old ones. But I wanted to show you guys the new ones. That way, if the one you currently have is falling apart, you can get a new one. I'll put that link in the comments and in the description. Let's get to some defensive guys here. Taco Charlton, uh, the defensive end, obviously has not had the career uh, that was expected when he was a first-round pick out of the Dallas Cowboys a few years ago. But kudos to Brett Veach and the Chiefs taking a chance on him. Play with Frank Clark in college. Clark thinks he can bring something to the table. I'll be interested to see. Uh, he's hoping a fresh start will jumpstart his career. Sometimes guys who underachieve early on or even a bust early on they get to a new situation, a winning situation like the Chiefs, and all of a sudden they're an impact player. I'm not thinking he's going to come in and be a six-sack guy or something like that, but A, can he make this football team, and B, can he rotate in and have an impact? Because through 37 games of his NFL career, he's got nine sacks. You know, that that's not a lot. A couple of those were empty sacks with Miami last year as well. He simply has not done much up to this point in his NFL career, but opportunities are there on this defensive line. Clark's got one of those spots held up, but you got Tano Passigno, Alex Okafor, uh, you know, the rookie Michael Dana, will Breland Speaks do anything? Lots of intriguing players to watch at training camp. I'm focusing on Taco, the former first-round pick, but there's a lot of guys to keep in mind here on this defensive line. Will Taco Charlton make the 53-man roster? Type Y for yes, type N for no. This is not a guarantee. He has got to earn his place on this football team. That's why Taco Charlton is a player to look out for at training camp this year. Linebacker Willie Gay Jr., the rookie out of Mississippi State, Probably the second most intriguing player I'm keeping an eye on at camp because obviously Clyde edwards helaire is number one. But Willie Gay Jr. is a guy that I keep saying, first of all, boober bus guy, had you know some questionable character concerns. 
only played in five games last year, but he's got all the tools. Like, I think he could be, by the end of this season, the best linebacker on this football team, and I think he'll be a week one starter if he has a solid training camp. Now, these are the numbers in just five games. Over a 12 or 13, 14 game season, though, that would have been a really, really good season in the SEC for Mississippi State. He run, he's a mid 4-4 guy. He's going to play in coverage. He can get downhill. I think he'll provide some pass rush as well, maybe two and a half, three sacks as well. He's going to be very, very intriguing to see how his career plays out early on, and it all starts at training camp. Who will have the most tackles at the linebacker position? This is intriguing because the Chiefs play a lot of nickel. So WG for Willie Gay Jr., A.H. for Anthony Hitchens, type D.W. for Damian Wilson. The safe bet would still be Anthony Hitchens, but I am keeping my eye on Willie Gay Jr. I'm high on him. I think he's got a good chance to be really good. He's got to keep his head screwed on straight and stay focused, which I think he will. All right, a couple more players before we wrap things up. Rashad Fenton, the corner. I like him a lot. I liked what I saw from him last year in limited uh, snaps for the Chiefs. You could tell this coaching staff and Spags and those guys really started to trust him down the stretch, and I think it's a big reason why they didn't go sign anyone in free agency after Kendall Fuller walks because they got Rashad Fenton. Uh, they drafted a player who we're going to talk about here in a second. I think the Chiefs feel like they've got enough back there uh, to fill up that nickel versatility role that Kendall Fuller plays. Four PBUs and 166 defensive snaps. That's pretty good. Had an interception. Played some meaningful snaps in the playoffs as well. I like Rashad Fenton. I thought it was a good find in the draft last year in the sixth round by Brett Veach. He continues to just stack that resume. I have him penciled in as my starter at nickel. But he'll have to hold off a rookie draft pick, Legereus Sneed, who Kansas City is also very high on, out of Louisiana Tech. We've talked about these two. We've talked about this competition before. Uh, now, Sneed has the ability to play some outside corner, as Fenton does, but I think Sneed's got, you know, he's got more size. He's 6'1", played safety and corner in college, uh, has that versatility as well. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, Bashad Breland might miss some games with the suspension, which would mean Legereus Sneed probably starts opposite of Tarverius Ward in week one. That is very much a possibility. Now, I think he's going to compete at nickel and at outside corner because I think he could still earn that starting job at nickel if he performs better than Rashad Fenton, although I do think Fenton has the inside track. You see the versatility. You see the numbers. Those numbers last year, by the way, were playing safety, which was the first time he played safety in college. So he's a playmaker at multiple spots in the back end uh, for this Chiefs secondary. Obviously, we'll have to see if it translates to the NFL, but the Chiefs are high on him. I think he's got a chance to be good. It'll be interesting to see how they mix and match these pieces, especially if Bashad Breeland misses games with the suspension and if Juan Thornhill's not ready to go week one either as he has been placed in the pup list as he continues to recover from his ACL. So who will start at nickel? Type RF for Rashad Fenton. Type LS for Legereus Sneed. I'm going to type my RF. I think he gets the start plus, knows the system, limited offseason hurts Snead's chances. I'm going to go with RF.